Hi, this is Tom Blodgett from Genda Industries, and today we're going to introduce the Genda Glass Lapping Plate. The Genda Glass Lapping Plate is 250 mils by 100 mils, or 10 inches by 4 inches, and is about a half an inch thick or 12 mils thick. Uh, it's two sided. The first side is etched glass. The etched side is used for the lapping side of full size stones or 1x6 or 1x4 stones, any size stone basically. Uh, and you use the corresponding lapping powders with that. The other side is flat and can be used as a reference plate. Also, it fits about a half of sheet of sandpaper or film. So you can use that as a reference or a sharpening uh, flat with sandpaper that way. So we're going to demonstrate using the powders on a 1x6 stones. So what we do to get it started here is just spritz it with a little bit of water. You can run it under water and just have it just wet. You don't need like a pooling of water. I've got pre-soaked stone, so I've got a 5K. I'm going to mark it with the pencil. So here I'm going to use the fine grit because it's 5K, so it's a fine grit stone. And you don't need a whole lot, especially for 1x6s. Uh, so just a little bit of a pepper. You can do obviously a little bit more if you're going to do a full size stone. So here, just back and forth. You can see how fast it's already cutting that off, getting all the stone. Especially some stones like to bleed more. This 5K is it's thirsty, uh, but it's already flat. So, good to go on that. Next, what I like to do when I'm doing this, when I'm lapping my stones, I personally go from fine to coarse because here I have fine powder. If I were to go the opposite way, I could cross contaminate. But if I have fine powder and I add medium powder, then it doesn't really matter about the fine powder or any residue being on there. So it doesn't cross contaminate downwards. Okay, I'm going to use the medium powder now. We're going to do the 3K stone. So the same thing. So a little bit of pepper. That's probably even too much. Uh, obviously, the more stone that you have, the more you want to cover that. So if I were doing a full-size stone, I'd want to try to get the whole area just evenly. You don't want to see any pooling up like that, any buildup, because that digs deeper and creates problems later. And again, on a 1x6, not really going to be a problem, but on some full-size stones, especially if they bleed a lot, could be an issue. So, okay, I got that. Same thing. You can hear the difference. So I'm just doing a forward and backwards, then an X pattern this way, and then the X the other way, and then I, I rotate through the same pattern. So forward and backwards, X, X, back, and rotate. Alright, so then pretty clean. Alright, so now on the 1K, uh, you have a choice here. You can keep with the medium. I'm going to keep a medium on this one, uh, or you can go coarse to have a little more texture there. So because we're here, and I'm going to use my 400 uh, before the 1K in this case, I'm going to keep it at a medium grit. So I'm going to mark it with a pencil. Okay. I don't have to add powder right now, but if you feel you need to, then you can. You'll know. Just a little bit of Christmas on there. Okay, 400. And you can hear how aggressive it is. And that's what you want on your coarse grit stall. So that's the advantage of having those grooves in there uh, because it allows the uh, abrasive to catch and then it just becomes more aggressive and also clears off all the, all the, all the residue uh, and allows it to channel out in the liquid so that you're able to cut more efficiently and faster than just flat glass alone. So that's the real advantage of these. All right, so if you're going to do full-size stones, it's the same thing. i got a 1,000 grit. I'm on the coarse. So in this case, a 1,000 grit for me, I would use the coarse. So I'm going to get a little bit of wet here. Okay. And we just do the same thing. Um, let me add a little bit extra because I don't have it covered all the way. Okay. And you don't want it to kind of uh, accumulate in any one place. All right. 
Now you're going to listen to this sound, it's just, you know, almost nasty. So turn the volume all the way up. So, you get very effective, very economical in this case. Those grooves really make all the difference. All right, I'm going to clean this up, come back, and show you how to use the flat side, the other side here. Be right back. If you flip over, the lapping plate on the other side is flat glass. So you can use that as a lapping plate as well. Obviously, you would use this side more. Uh, but you could also then use this as a reference plate uh, or some sharpening uh, plate as well if you're going to use sandpaper. So the ideal size is that this actually will be a little bit bigger than uh, most, depending on you know what country you're in. But sandpaper that you can take about a half a sheet of sandpaper so I've just folded this one sheet in half and ripped it down the middle so it actually fits with overhang so you got plenty of space here you can grab around uh, with wet dry you can often just wet the back just put a little bit of water down and there's enough usually there to kind of hold everything in place now you can go dry uh, you want to use oil or whatever you're doing with your sandpaper you can do that uh, so then you, know, you get your, your blade here and then you have a, a flat plate for your sharpening or stropping or whatever you're going to be doing with different grits of sandpaper. You can put the mouse down on there. So again, you've got this flat surface that you can utilize for your sharpening. For referencing, if you want to use chisels and planes, you want to flatten that, the, the back face out. Uh, you've got plenty of space to do that with. And it's just a quick, easy change with the sandpaper. The surface tension really, really helps. To find out more about the Genda glass lapping plate, check us out at www.gendaindustries.com. I'll put the link up here. And like and subscribe. And check out our other videos. Thank you.